you've ever made bone broth and you're stirring and you set your ladle down and it cools, how it has that, you know what I mean? How it congeals mm-hmm. right there. Yep. Well, I take it and I kind of just rub it on my face. Yes. Do I smell like a giant pot roast? hundred <laughs> percent. But like, <laughs> dude, my skin just <laughs> sucks it in and it gives me this glow. I swear if Bam were here, he would vouch for it. So we rub fat and oils and all this kind of stuff on my face. Here's what's so funny. I don't have any pimples. I, and I'm i not sitting here saying it's like a cure-all, but like I am, I have Christy freaking doing it now. Mm-hmm. We're some wild last group of Beverly Hillbillies now. Yeah. Rubbing fat on my, I sit there and I'm like, I asked Bam the other night, hey, if I was a smell, what would I be? I'm thinking like he'd be like lilac, ocean breeze. He says pot roast. These are stories of outdoor adventure and expert advice from folks with calloused hands. I'm James Nash, and this is the Six Ranch Podcast. A hot drink can become cool in two primary ways, through conduction and convection. Conduction occurs when two objects touch each other. Imagine holding a piece of ice. Before long, your fingers are cold and the ice begins to melt. That's conduction. Convection occurs when a gas or liquid moves from being different temperatures. When you heat water over a stove, the warm water moves up and the cool water moves down. That's what you're seeing when water boils, and that's convection. A stainless vacuum bottle prevents conduction from occurring by creating a void between the walls of the bottle, thermos, or cup and the outside air. It prevents convection by keeping all the liquid inside at the same temperature. That's how a Stanley product keeps your cold drink cold and your hot drink hot. And they've been doing it for 110 years. The Six Ranch Podcast is brought to you by Stanley 1913, and you can check out their new and classic line of products at stanley1913.com. So there you were, in Southern California, being born. And then, at some point, things changed. Yes. So, for, for the gals out there who marry hunters and don't necessarily come from hunting families. What is the first piece of advice that you have to offer? Ask lots of questions. Ask lots of questions. Lots of questions. What are some example questions? Well, you first have to learn the history, and that is, you know how Brian and I met, right? Um, At a stoplight when he was running from the police. Yes, driving. We met while driving. That's the hardest concept for people to understand. So when we first met and we started talking and he told me what he did, the first, that was the first red flag was, I'm a Marine. <laughs> Don't judge. And I'm like, oh, jeez. I dodged Marines for years living, you sure. know, next to Camp Pendleton and stuff. And so, of course, the one I meet while driving happens to be a Marine. So when we met and, and started dating, It was very subtle how he would bring up certain hunting things. And so, like, I'm thinking, oh, okay, this guy's from upstate New York, just some cute little hillbilly, you know, (laughs) runs through the runs through the woods barefoot with a shotgun. Like, that's what you think (laughs) when they say, I'm serious, when they say, oh, I grew up duck hunting and, you know, with my dad, you think of this. No, you know, at the time. You're picturing like last of the Mohicans just like ripping his shirt off, running through, you know, yeah. the rainforest, some chasing Carhartt. something down. Yeah, yeah, some Carhartt, Mossy Oak hat, like, uh-huh. you know, yep. that's all I'm picturing. Yeah. And then it slowly went from just shooting birds to bigger things. And at the time, and what's what's crazy, and this is actually crazy to me, is I grew up knowing nothing about that and it, what's weird is it's not like I was necessarily against it but I walked around not even taking into consideration you know how much different it could be in a in a healthier better way right so it that took me years years 
to appreciate and understand. But in the beginning, another thing, here's another thing that women need to ask. When a dude brings up, oh, I'm into hunting or oh, I'm into cars. I would much rather this dude be into cars than freaking hunting. That stuff is expensive. And it just, it keeps going. It never ends, even after the animal's shot. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's some additional (laughs) expenses. Um, Taxidermy, for example. Oh, God. Yeah. You want to talk about taxidermy? Okay. So the audience can't see this, okay? (laughs) So I'm going to try to paint this picture as best as I can. Okay. Bam has property lines in our house, Mm. all right? All right. So on this particular wall that's behind you, and again, the audience can't see this, but one question you have to ask is, do you seriously have to mount every single thing you shoot? No, is the answer to that. Well, good old Bam over here does. No, he does not. He mounts everything. No, he doesn't. (laughs) Not even close. (laughs) Even the dink up there? Dink. That's a dink. (laughs) That's the biggest animal here. What are you (laughs) talking dink? Now I know it's a dink because now I'm seasoned. I'm a seasoned hunter wife, right? So I look at in the beginning when he shot that, I was like, oh, good job, babe. Oh, my God. Archery. And then now it's like, really? The thing, can we move it? Can we put it in the garage? Like, And, uh, yeah. So we're talking about that great big bull elk up there. That's what you're calling a dink? Yes. Burn. Now, that is not, by far not the smallest animal on the wall that I'm looking at. No. The smallest animal, that, that's that one over there. Very, very nice mount. Looks really good. Yes. And that one almost caused a divorce. Really? Yes. What, what is it? What is that mount? Oh, God. I can't even turn and look at it and give have, it the acceptance. You have a hard time looking at I it? I have such a hard time. And for the listeners out there especially the wives who know exactly what I'm talking about before I even describe the animal, is I look at my lovely husband and he tells me about, oh, he's, he knows how much I want, like, furs. You know, mm-hmm. just just coyote stuff. Like, just yeah. a bunch of them to have just furs to wear because I just want to be bougie like that, you know? Yeah. There's something powerful about wearing a fur. Sure, you want, like, a shawl. Yeah, yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Stick my little hands in, hat. Head to toe like fur. Let me ask a question real quick. (laughs) Have you been to Rocky Mountain Fur and Fireworks? No. So not far away from you, towards towards Oregon, right off the interstate, there's this big yellow building, and it's called Rocky Mountain Fur and Fireworks. It is a slice of Americana. It sounds American. Okay. Big yellow building. You can go in there and buy fireworks year-round. You can also buy all of your trapping equipment. Yeah. They make their own trapping baits and lures. There's just like Connex boxes outside with like just crazy amounts of every type of trapping implement that you could ever want. And then within the fireworks division of the store, there's also row after row of every kind of fur. <laughs> like it, this is the most Idaho store that could possibly exist. I love it. Gosh, I have to go. You do. I have to go. So yeah. he, he knew about this. And so this is what's funny. And again, let me go to where the wives know what I'm talking about. We know our husbands, right? We just read them. We know them. So this dude's sweating <laughs> like a hooker in church. Okay. You think he's up to no good. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's having an affair. And let me just say, I'd much rather he had an affair uh-huh. over when I found out. Okay. So Listen. I have to tell you something. I'm like, oh, my God, here it comes. Here it comes. He is, you know how he pulls his shirt and he's just kind of like, okay, like he's prepping. I'm like, cool. This dude's about to tell me he's having an affair. What's going on? Okay, so I have, uh, okay, listen, I have this taxidermy bill. Instant, instant wish it was an affair, right? Uh-huh. Less expensive than what he was about to tell me. And he goes, there are these, these foxes. And I'm like. Okay, okay, a fox. The fox are soft. I could wear a fox. Uh-huh. That's even bougier than a coyote. Yeah. Oh, no. Mm-mm. He had it mounted yep. like some freaking tomcat on a log and I, or rocks. If people could see it, I, I hate it that much that I can't even acknowledge what it's on. And they were something that we had to take out a second mortgage for. 
And he got not just one, he got two. And you know what he says? This is what he says. I did it for you. What do you mean? I need. I wanted to wear these things, not stare at them and dust them off every freaking two weeks, you know? So that's why they are a, an interesting talking point. And they're obviously smack dab in the middle of the living room and the kitchen. Yeah. Well, they're, they're beautiful mounts. <laughs> Great foxes. I'm glad you could appreciate it. They'd be much beautiful wearing, but, you know, uh, he learned his lesson, I think. Okay. Yeah. He did, actually, because when we were in Texas a couple of weeks ago, any time that we saw a fox or anybody <laughs> said a word that rhymed with fox, he would get nervous and start shaking. He'd be like, we need, to, we need to go. We need to change our flights and get out of here. Pain retains. Pain retains. <laughs> Pain retains on that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you need to need to ask questions. Yes, yes. What are some other questions? Oh, geez. Do you process your own? Because if they're like, oh, no, I drop it off at the thing. Okay, that's nice. Well, because guess what you're going to learn how to do as a wife? You're going to learn how to process it. Now, We're Brit, talking processing meat. Yes, and processing fat. meat, mm-hmm. fat, all that. Now, Britt, years ago, would have been like, ah, drop it off, right? Much easier. Mm-hmm. I am, it's bittersweet now because I'm seasoned, Yeah. right? Yeah. So in a way, in some sick, twisted little way, we find enjoyment out of it. And what I can say is if you include your family, like your kids, and you make it this thing, it's actually, it's actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, beautiful in some weird, sick, twisted little way. It really is. It's it great. really is. Yeah, meat processing is awesome. It's work. Yes. And I am so Cal, oh God, I hope, as a, you know what, like I am just hardcore SoCal and never in a million years, even my family is like, what the hell, you're rendering down fat, making bone broth like a witch in my garage. <laughs> I have a camp chef like, you know, burner with propane and I'm out there looking like a dang witch conjuring something with two giant stock pots and and bones and all this kind of stuff and you should see how excited I get. It it's crazy. So I would ask that. Um good God. I would ask how involved you need to be. And that's what's crazy. So I learned that I have preferences with hunting with Brian. Mm-hmm. So I'm all about killing shit. I prefer bears over some other things. But I'm like a simple wife, just bears and a crocodile every now and then. What do you like about bears? Oh, man. So in the beginning, I was kind of like I wasn't sure how I would handle it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a bear, right? Like, they're pretty cool if you think about it. But when you're sitting there and you're watching one, And I'm not talking about ones that you're about to, you know, that you have in the scope. You're just watching, especially if it's like a small one. You appreciate the predator aspect of it. And I say that, you know, lightly, meaning like not all predators are treated equal. But this one, they're just fascinating to me. Their mannerisms, what they do. I love how they taste. I get so many eyebrow raises when they're like, you ain't bear. I'm like, yeah, I can it too. Yeah. And it's even better canned. It I is love better canned. It. I love it canned. Dude, I really like fall bear. And a lot of the ways that you cook bear are, I guess, more intentional. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you can't just take a piece of bear meat and throw salt and pepper on it and sear it on right. both sides and enjoy it. That's not how bear works. So everything is a lot more involved. There's more of a process. And, and from that comes a really good product. Oh, yeah. I love it. We, It's so funny because I love bear jerky Mm -hmm. and that blows people's mind because we you know you in a way you have to we got some flack in the past like you need to cook it to get all the trigonoses out and all this kind of stuff but i'm like i'm i love my freaking shoe bottom jerky where you're just kind of chewing on it for a while and the flavor and everything like so yeah we we cook it to well past what it should be but even i love that we we our whole family eats the crap out of that and then canned i crock pot it and you make this killer pot roast out of it chili out of it like and it's a bear and i just i love the little the swizzle sticks too those are fun to collect Mm -hmm. yeah never in a million years would you ever think born and raised in orange county i'm oh i want a swizzle stick bear penis Mm -hmm. you know yeah 
The bone. And us as, you know, a family measuring, dad's was bigger last year. Oh, mom's going to beat him this year. Like, it's insane. I look, I lay in bed sometimes like, this is my life. I never in a million years thought it would ever be. And then I get mad if my tallow isn't ready yet. You know, it's, it's wild. It's a wild journey. But I will say it is as great as you and your attitude makes it. So I have a lot of friends that they can't even believe that I put up with half the stuff I put up with or him being gone and, and stuff like that. And my mentality is I'm, I'm conservative in the aspect of, and I hope no one takes this the wrong way, but him being gone, I like it. Not mm-hmm. in a way that we need it, but when he comes back, you have the, you know, he's coming back from a hunting trip. It's, there's this fire that's, he's doing what, you know, I believe mankind's been doing for a long time. Yeah. And it's cool. And then and what's even cooler is he brings it back and then you're processing it, you're cooking it, you're working with your hands in that aspect and you're feeding your family. And it's this really beautiful process that blows my mind that I would have probably never been introduced to if I never would have met him. That's what's wild. How do you feel about the health aspect of it? Is uh, that is that important to you at all? Very very important. Um, what blows my mind, and I could get in a rabbit hole with people on this, and this is, again, my opinion, my beliefs, my theories, what you can get out of an entire animal and what it can do for you. Like, did you ever see the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding? No. Oh, my God. You have to watch it. Okay. The dad sprays Windex on everything. Windex fixes everything, right? Okay. I think it's a big fat group. Uh, yeah, I believe so. He sprays Windex. People who are listening to this will know what I'm talking about. That's how I am with freaking tallow. Yeah. Mom, I have a rat. Mom, I have a Here, put some tallow on it. That's where it's come down to. It's crazy. Well, rub some dirt on it is, <laughs> is definitely old school. Rub some fat on it. You know, that does fix a lot of stuff. When I was first guiding as a kid, I was having to borrow horses all the time and moving my saddle from one to the next. And uh, sometimes those horses would get saddle sores. And, you know, I right. wasn't super great at riding. Um, and I didn't know that there was ways to ride long distance that could prevent that. Um, I was also new to packing mules. So sometimes boxes and loads would shift around and mules would get little sore spots. Right. You always fix that with bacon grease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and same thing with, like, little cuts and nicks on dogs. Like, the first thing to do is, like, take some bacon grease and put it on it. And, you know, the properties and similarities to pig fat and uh, bear fat are basically identical. It's, a, it's hilarious. Yeah. I'll tell you something. We were at Sephora, okay? And, you know, it's a makeup store. And I had a question about a certain foundation that they had to match, you know, and a little makeup artist comes up and she, like, you know, plays with it, does this thing. And this makeup artist gives me a compliment on my skin, right? And we're our worst critics. Like, I'm always, you know, my skin could always be better and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you have really beautiful skin. And I'm like, I kind of step back and I'm like, thank you. Like, it's the nicest thing, (laughs) right? I was like, what the hell? Like, you know, it's cool to hear because you don't think about it. I see a wrinkle here and see this and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, seriously, like, what do you use? And I'm like, here's my time to shine, right? I'm like, here goes nothing. <laughs> this chick ain't even ready. I'm like, well, it's actually really funny because I rub fat on my face. And she's like, kind of looks at me and she's like, oh, like, you know, what, what is the thing that's trendy? Like cow butter and you know mm-hmm. what I mean? All beeswax and all this kind of crap. I'm like, no, like, you know, I do a lot of processing. I experiment. When I make bone broth, which high collagen – and I sit and I, you know, if you've ever made, and I'm veering left for a second, if you've ever made bone broth and you're stirring and you set your ladle down and it cools, how it has that, you know what I mean? How it congeals mm-hmm. right there. Yep. Well, I take it and I kind of just little rub it on my face. Yes. Do I smell like a giant pot roast? hundred percent. But like, <laughs> dude, my skin just <laughs> sucks it in and it gives me this glow. I swear Bammer here, he would vouch for it. So we rub fat and oils and all this kind of stuff on my face. Here's what's so funny. I don't have any pimples. 
I, and I'm not sitting here saying it's like a cure all, but like I am, I have Christy freaking doing it now. Mm -hmm. We're some wild ass group of Beverly Hillbillies now. Yeah. Rubbing fat on my, I sit there and I'm like, I asked Bam the other night, hey, if I was a smell, what would I be? I'm thinking like you'd be like lilac, ocean breeze. He says pot roast. See, that's what happens. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is a, that. That's the kind of question that girls ask guys, and that's the kind of answer that guys give yeah, back. Yeah, sure. that's that's classic. That's classic. I can't even be mad. And he true. he probably means that as like a super sincere uh, compliment. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So I tell that you should see the look on people's faces, and it's almost like. Horrific. Like mm. some look at, and then they change the subject because they don't even know what the frick to say. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> you should try it. Yeah. I'm serious. I freaking love it. Yeah. My cook a few years ago, she made chapstick out of uh, rendered bear lard, but she also made a salve. Salve? Salve? Yeah, salve. And uh, I don't know if she put like witch hazel or some other stuff in it, but yeah. um, she gave me some of that. It was good. Yeah. Try to hurt, rub it on. It's good for you. Never in a million years would I ever have thought that we would be eating heart as a family. Mm. And that's freaking amazing. Heart's excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I feel so bad in the past. Like, things that I used to say no to. Like, I mean, gizzards aren't for everyone, but you wouldn't catch me dead having gizzard gravy. You know what I mean? Now I'm like, oh, I'm going to try it. Like, all this kind of weird. Because I'm just so fascinated I encourage any hunter's wife listening to this. God, please listen to me. If you're in the kitchen as much as I am, the fact that I will never buy bone broth ever again, it brings me to the point where I swear if I really dive into it, it brings me almost to tears of the money I spent on broth in the past and how many bones and stuff that we've thrown away and how much collagen and just complete asset in food form, gold, liquid gold is in these animals. And I know off of experience, like gut issues. So that's a whole, like when you were talking about the health, like people just can go into a rabbit hole with it. You cut those bones in half, you roast them in this amazing stuff. I roast them till they're fragrant. And, you know, and I, I do my whole broth ordeal and the collagen, you watch it slide out. And it's almost like, you can't even believe it. And we had food poisoning not too long ago, and bone broth, our Christie's elk bone broth, is the only thing that soothed our stomach. We were able to stop vomiting. And did you get food poisoning from some stuff that you had processed or from no. stuff you ate somewhere else? Freaking Eggs Benedict from some crappy little diner here. Yeah. Eggs Benedict. Can you yeah. believe that? Scarred me for life. It's a great dish. Oh, God, I know. You know what's funny is that Cakey, she... <laughs> She was like, I don't like it. It doesn't taste right. And I'm thinking it's just the way they made it. Like, you yeah. know, they add their little flavor. Right. Oh, yeah. So we just, Christy and I about died, drank bone broth, and it soothed. So it's like, again, I encourage people, as long as everything's processed and in an ethical, clean manner, man, you are sitting on gold with it and just flavor-wise. So another aspect of this is that not only are you uh, – hunter mm -hmm. and a hunter's wife but you are raising daughters who are hunting as well yes tell me about that because I, I i i feel like you're doing it right I and there's a lot that. of people that that want to take their kids hunting mm -hmm. but they're nervous about how to do it and i'm not saying that the way that you guys do it is going to work for every kid out there mm -hmm. um but you are definitely doing it right. Your kids are awesome. I appreciate they're, that. They're so well behaved and they're having fun and they're respectful and they're they're accomplishing things. They're just great kids. Like I Thanks. really enjoy being around your daughters. They're awesome people. I appreciate that. My biggest thing is to raise them, and it sounds so cliche, but in this day and age, like it raise them with virtue. So it, virtue is something that's like, in my opinion, lost in today's world. If you ask someone what does virtue mean, like, they wouldn't even know. And, like, dignity and clothed in grace and this whole aspect. And it's like, I want them to know that them being out in the field and having their hands in an animal up to their elbows 
processing this animal, appreciating every aspect of it, giving it the respect that it deserves, especially after my biggest thing was when I first, you know, hunted with Brian, it was a very emotional experience for me. And that's an emotion that some people talk about and some people don't. And sometimes I feel like when they talk about it, they don't really go into the fact that like you're taking a life, right? You're taking a life. But in the way that you're taking it, I teach my girls old fashioned, you thank it in the aspect of like, hey, you're going to feed my family. I'm going to try to utilize every last bit of you to feed and nourish and care for my family. Like, thank you for that. And it's a respect to the animal. And we, we tried telling our girls, and that's from start to finish. And my advice is you bring them out with you. They'll bitch, moan, depending on how old they are, if they're teens or even kids. Bring them with you. Teach them things, even if they don't quite understand it, as long as you stay consistent with it. Like, Cakey can skin out an antelope faster than almost Brian can. Mm -hmm. Skin an antelope, even with their crazy hollow hair that comes out. And she she appreciates it. And my, my goal was, Brian's goal was to teach them to appreciate animals more than Disney teaches kids how to appreciate animals. I like that. And I told I tell the girls, I'm like, you know what? You care more about these animals, and here you took their life, more than any kid that is watching it on the Disney Channel. So Keiki's super skilled. Um, she's interested. She's developing her own virtues, and, and Christy as well. They're developing their own virtues in, in being thankful for for the life that they're taking and then what that means to them from a spiritual standpoint throughout this process, then they're getting the health benefits from all the food and the bone marrow and the bone broth and everything else. Once it's back here and processed, they're, they're gaining skills as far as like starting a, a difficult task, following it through, and then working with it at different levels, right? You've got right. to, you've got to earn it before you ever pull the trigger. You've got to get it off the mountain. You've got to take care of it to get it in the freezer. You've got to learn how to cook it. Then you get to eat it. Now it literally becomes a part of you for sure, and makes you healthier, mm -hmm. um, physically healthier, mentally healthier, spiritually healthier. Like what a powerful thing. You're like, I told them you're honoring this animal. Let me tell you something that's so wild that depending on who's listening Hopefully their perspective is where yours is at. Christy becoming the very skilled and, God, incredibly just as a person, as a young woman and hunter, right? Because she's been doing some gnarlier hunts than I have, right? She usurped me on that. Yeah. And I, I'm all about it. And watching her grow with Brian and it forges her in this way of, not independence that she could do anything on her own. It's it's not that type of thing, but it's a survival aspect of knowledge. And what's so wild is when she ha had her odd ad hunt with Brian, she really wanted to kill an odd ad. She just admires this, these crazy looking animals, right? And what's so crazy is she is so accurate and so obsessed with making sure that her precision is on point. That when, even though she punched this odd ad so perfect, and if you're, fam you know, you're familiar, they're not an easy animal to go down. They're tough. They're tough. Now, yeah. she doesn't know that. You know what I mean? So here she beat herself up so bad. Not like she didn't, she didn't do anything wrong. Didn't gut punch, nothing. It was just behind the shoulder, but they're these big giant just they're native, I believe, native to Africa, right? They are. Yeah, they're just these giant beasts. And she was beating herself up so bad. And when Brian and her came home, and I'm like, this is tearing me up that she's so sad. And he's like, she's just hard on herself. And I said, Christy, the fact that you did nothing wrong, right? But the fact that you are so worried that you did just shows how much you care and how ethical of a hunter you are. I'm like, it's beautiful. That's what so blows my mind in the anti-hunting community is now there's always crappy people. There's crappy doctors. There's crappy moms, you know? Like, yes, there's crappy hunters. But, like, what's important is her virtue and how we are raising her because whatever she's learning now, my hopes is that she carries on 
with her family and her kids and that she will continue to honor those animals. And that's what's so beautiful to me and that a lot of people miss out on because they don't drag their kids in with them. Some kids you don't have to drag. We don't have to drag our kids, but I always encourage some of our friends that they're like, ah, they're not really into it. I'm like, dude, make it. Just tell them, hey, just come with me. I just want to teach you certain things. It, it, I mean, for crying out loud, if hunting's not their thing, like, you could show them certain foraging things. Like, there's so much cool stuff about being outdoors, and it blows my mind that I would have never seen it. I, I honestly give all the credit to Brian, for sure. 100%. 150%. Because, you know, I've, I've watched that guy kill a lot of stuff, and there's this, you know, stigma with being a, quote, killer in the aspect, but, like, you don't see how hard – he works for it, how he honors it, how he respects the animal, and all, all the way down to pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's crazy. I, I support anyone to just make it a family outing. God, we've had some crazy ass adventures, stuff that, like, we all look at each other like, holy crap, did that happen? And it's just so much fun, and they learn stuff, and they learn how to manage emotions, and they learn how to manage stress. Let's talk about, like, the adrenaline dump. Like, you know, you have that, too. Where they, they're like, I think I'm going to be sick. I'm like, you know, it's just all these crazy things that you can't learn in school, that you learn with the world. So it's just, I, I love it, and I love watching them grow in it, too, and especially, you know, Kagey's following Christy, but just Christy and the, you know, in the Marine Corps term, suck level, yeah. right? Her suck level keeps rising. There's hunts that I'm like, hell no, I'm good on that one. She had to earn it on that black oh, hunt. Oh, God, she did. Yeah. So it's fun. I, you know, not every kid is built the same, but kids are pretty resilient and they're, you drag them or bring them enough times, like they're going to start showing interest in something, something outside of the house. And that's, that's my recommendation. I hear from a lot of guys that they have to like barter with their wives in order to get to go hunting. And, you know, it's always like an ordeal, like, Oh, I've, I've got to, you know, take them on this trip so that they'll let me go hunting. And then there's, there's other, there's other couples that work a lot more closely together. And it's like, no, I want to support my husband or my partner in doing this. And, when I can, I'm going to go with them, but, or maybe that's not my thing and I'm going to help with game processing. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the couples that, that support each other are a lot more powerful in everything that they do, right? If, if you're a, a wife who supports your husband in going out and hunting, even if that's not your thing, he's going to be a hundred times more likely to support you in your thing that he's not into. 8,000%. And you know what? You guys are such <laughs> simplistic creatures, right? We're the ones with crossed wires. These, I get mad at him for not knowing that I'm mad, right? Like, we are so, as women, just so complex. And you guys are these simple, like, these just simple creatures, right? And I can 100% vouch for that. And in, in this exact story of, I have no passion, not one, to, to kill a mountain lion. Right? It's not my yeah. thing. Am I against it? No, not at all. I just personally don't want to kill one. Sure. Right? Now, back in, gosh, 2015, Bam had the opportunity to go. And he's like, do you want to come with me? And, like, I, you know, I'm, I would be lying if I said I was like, nah, not really. I don't want to see, like, a cat die. I'm just, it's not in, you know, I just don't have any preference. And But then I'm like, you know what? When am I ever going to see a mountain lion? Right. When am I ever going to see one? They're like Bigfoot. They're so elusive. You hear about them, but you never see it. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm like, I'm just going to go because I want to see one. Now, full disclosure, I had no idea it was going to be negative 28 with snow up to my thighs. And I'm five, one and a half. Okay. Bam, six, three. So it's going up to his like high knee. Mine's up to my thigh. It was one of those hunts that forged us as a couple right to where we had a Romeo and Juliet moment where I we looked at each other and we're like are you ready to die like I'm ready to die <laughs> it was horrible dude it was 
horrible. My eyelashes were fro- like frozen to my eyelid. His snot was frozen to his upper lip. Like I've never been in that type of weather. And if anyone has, they know what I'm talking about. We were walking. We looked at each other like, and we had kids at home. And we're like, let's do this. You die, I die. We were ready. It was horrible. But here's what's so crazy. I would 100% do it again. And we, um, the guys that we were with, their dogs treat a cat. And let me just tell you, standing there, and this is a wife who has no preference, or, you know, I don't want to kill a cat. And I'm looking up, and I'm looking at this cat, and they look through you, in deep down into your soul, something you cannot explain. This cat was just chilling, too, not hissing, not all crazy, just laying there like Bagheera from Jungle Book with his little tail, you know, it was just chilling. And I remember thinking, like, oh, my God, there are people that die in this world that have never seen a mountain lion. We're just taking these pictures of it, and Brian passes on it, which is also cool because, you know, he's not just going to kill it just to kill it. So we all got to stand and look up at this cat who's just chilling, and it was such an amazing thing. I just went through the frozen tundra wanting to die with my husband, and here I forgot all about it staring at this cat. That forged us to get, we sit and we laugh and joke about it all the time. Like, that's our suck level together. Yeah. Right? When I killed, oh, God, my third bear, we're hiking back. <laughs> God, I love being a wife. I love being a wife. You, and I'll, I'm going to try to paint this if anyone can relate. Here we kill this bear. We're trying to hurry. We're, we pack it all out, and it's getting dark now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Here my freaking dumbass goes downhill. Brian goes, what are you doing? You never go downhill. Because I have 75 pounds on my back, yeah. right? Yeah. You never go downhill. I'm like, oh, trying to get back up, <laughs> like not knowing, not knowing that every step that you take, you're like, I'm leaving him. <laughs> I'm divorcing him. I'm going to kill him after I divorce him. Why am I even doing that? I was question- our whole lives flashing you know, I'm like, oh, my God. We're walking, and he looks at, we're going, and this this is taking eternity to pack out this bear. And until you've had 75 pounds of dead weight on your back and your husband behind you, keep walking, right? You're, you're like, cool, he's going to die. He's going to die. I'm going <laughs> to kill him. Never doing this again, right? He goes, hey, okay, you want to take a break? I'm like, yes. You can't talk when you have that on, mm-hmm. right? It's all clipped under your breast, like it's on your hips. There's this crazy science to carrying, having a pack, like nothing you ever would have think of. So he's like, okay, let's take a break. So we, we're we on an incline. So we're high siding, like, you know what I mean? Like walking. If the picture this, you're gnarly hill. You could roll down this hill if I just trip, and we're just going to, I'm just sitting on my pack. Well, we're sitting there for what felt like 10 seconds, but it was actually like a minute. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I've never taught you this before. I'm like, what, what do you mean you never taught me this before? I'm on my back leaning on this pack. Yep. Okay, listen, there's a way to get up, okay? I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what the frick? Because you get up wrong. I'm rolling down the hill. Yeah. You don't put in perspective of how you have to stand up with 75 pounds of dead weight on your back that you're leaning on. Mm-hmm. There's a whole freaking science to that as well. Okay, you got to roll. I had to roll over, get on a knee. And here's what's so crazy. Your, your brain is sending signals to your legs. Stand, Brittany, stand, right? Mm-hmm. Brittany ain't standing. Your legs aren't working. You have 75 pounds on your back of dead weight. Your legs are saying, oh, yeah, we're trying to stand, but you're not standing. Brian has to grab the top of my pack, pull me up. I remember turning around like this, and he's like, go. And I'm like, never again, right? <laughs> and I'm walking out. I'm stepping on what we thought were baby boas, but they weren't. They were these giant ass night crawlers james this is gonna sound like a folklore okay they were like four hot dogs put together in idaho big night crawlers Dude, just (laughs) just (laughs) popping them didn't even care i had i know what snot tastes like i know what boogers taste like but you want to know why because i was so thirsty (laughs) that i was drinking my own salted snot running down my nose it was horrible Dude, and then you get back to, the, you see the truck, you see the truck, and you're like, oh, my God, we're almost there. It's taking forever. You can't run to the truck. You get to the truck, you put your pack down, and then you get seasick because.
because you had so much weight on you. Your legs, you feel like you're on a freaking boat. Uh huh. Like you're gonna float away. We turn around, we look at each other, and he's like, you "Gonna do that again next spring?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we are." It was such an amazing feeling getting to the truck of pure hope is real, right? That you made it to the vehicle. Okay, I can. The fact that I can say I will do that again blows my ever-loving mind because I was going, I was literally premeditating his murder, was going to divorce him first, then kill him on the way back. It was horrible. I couldn't believe I did it. And here we are like, okay, let's do it again next year. So again, wives like, there's not, there's times where it just purely sucks. But what's cool is you get in that truck with him and he shuts his door and he turns and looks at you and he goes, can I cut? Yeah. I fucking love you. <laughs> and you look, you look at him. I have this messy bun, twig sticking out of it, frozen <laughs> snot, the, uh, like a toddler licking it, you know? And I'm like, I love you too. <laughs> like, you still love me? Like, this? God, I just fucking love you. Like, that is worth it. True. That's why dudes are so easy, man. I True try to, romance. I try to tell women all the time. I'm like, listen, they're so, they're so easy. You make them happy, guess what they end up doing? Guess who rubs my face every night? With fat and oils. <laughs> Bam Bam does. No one knows that. I lay in between him like this, and he, I'm like pottery in his hands. And he <laughs> massages my face. No one would ever do that, big old man. You know why? Because I freaking put in work. <laughs> <laughs> and it was worth it, 100%. I'm telling you. So that is that is my Brit advice on just being supportive. On our, our one of our wedding anniversaries, I'll never forget this. He goes, hey, you want to come with me and, and go to Colorado and, you know, for our anniversary? Make it all, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Of course, he had a tag, right? He had a tag. But why am I going to get mad about it? He goes out and Galavance does his thing and I either roll with them or we go out to dinner and you're just there. You're just with them. A lot of dudes just want the company. They just want to be there. And so that's why, to me, it's it's worth it. It's freaking worth it. So, oh God, never in a million years, man. I went from riding dirt bikes and having pink, platinum blonde and black hair and Mimi makeup and hot pink lips wearing Ed Hardy. To now, here we are. Yeah, making bear tallow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've I've sat in this kitchen and had you tell me explicitly uh, to not can bear tonight. Yeah, yeah, and then you left us unattended, and we did it anyways. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. It's wild, but I I I love it. I have no regrets. None. Good. Good. You also make some great video content around the subject. Where can people follow along to find that? Oh, God. I've, bu- I've tried to build up all my content, but that's on my Instagram. Super Agent Brit, right? What What is a super agent? Okay, so when I am on my downtime making bear fat mm-hmm. between, <laughs> and brought. Between be, I, being a mom and yeah, yeah. homeschooling. Yeah. I freaking sell real estate to pass mm-hmm. the time and pay the bills. So that's nice. that's where I have it. But um, okay. it's so, yeah, and to pay for his friggin' taxidermy. <laughs> Um, good thing you're good at it. Jeez. Um, no, but I do. I love to, when you do it right and you're not like a biatch, when you husband shame, it's actually quite fun. Hmm. Cause you know, he wife shames me all the time and we go, we banter back and forth. But my married to a hunter series is like the raw, no bullshit crap you have to go through. Mm-hmm. You know, like the fact of. When we clean out our coolers and he doesn't rinse the blood out on the driveway and he's like, oh, who cares? Oh, it's my house. And I'm like, hey, I, I have a face here. We have neighbors. Let's just hose down the blood. It's no big deal. I'll go and do it. That kind of stuff. You know, it's just husband shaming him. The mm-hmm. fact of that I have to dust freaking how many skulls and mounts and people have to know the struggle on it. And when I mess up hair on this stupid fox, I have to retrain it back. We're still talking about the fox, huh? Oh, God. Yeah. So there's there's some sacrifices and some stuff that you're just like, good God. But you know what? Like I said, I freaking made it, man. Like pottery in his hands. It's worth it. I get, I get my face massaged every night. And without hunting, I'm confident that these girls wouldn't be who they are. I agree. I agree. Yeah. There's something that... 
teaches it, it, it that start to finish failure, success, um, sorrow, you know, like doubt, self doubt, all these crazy Pandora's box worth of emotions that you learn in this in this venture of hunting. And like I said, not every hunter's made equal. You know, you are whatever you put into it. But God, you take the time to really appreciate nature and what it can actually do to you. That's what's so mind blowing is like you, you know, I said it earlier, they care more about that animal than anyone who ever claims that they do without hunting. It's true. Yeah. It's absolutely hundred percent true. And I have family, I have family against it. And I've said it, my daughters who actually squeeze the trigger on these animals care more about them than you do. Yeah. And as you sit back and you watch them on Nat Geo, you don't know until you're there, you know, and, and, you know, it's like I told you the story with Christy being so hard on herself with the shot. She did nothing wrong. It's just the fact it didn't drop like she's so used to. And it bothered her. It bothered her because in her mind, she didn't want, you know, an animal to suffer. Even though she had no idea, you know, you know, you're a dude and those animals are, God, they're resilient. And you, those odd ad are giant and they come from Africa. Like it takes more than just once. Yeah. No, they're super tough. I've only got to hunt odd ad once and uh, I shot this thing and it didn't react. Didn't react to the shot. Yeah. And uh, the kid that I was with goes, you missed. It's like, man, maybe, but it doesn't sound like, I right. don't think so. Right. Like, I think I was on it. And I shot it again, and it just, like, calmly walked off this boulder. And I was like, what is going on? This is new territory for me. Walked yeah. up there and found it dead. But it just wore those shots like a shirt. They're very, they're very tough. But learning stuff like that, even though it is emotional, and I could I can see people who who aren't hunters, you know, imagining their daughter going through something like this and thinking of it as, like, emotional trauma, when really it's more like, resilience and growth yep. and uh, I think that the experiences like that are you know why she is such a solid person it, it's like it goes it goes all the way down it goes all the way down to whoever's animal is in those coolers when we bring them home guess who's scrubbing them right you are we we're not gonna do it you took the life you're gonna continue to honor that animal even if it comes down to prepping, caring, cleaning from start to finish. Now, some people are like, oh, that's a little tough. No, it's not. Because if I, if we just raise her to just, okay, look at it, squeeze the trick, good job, okay, we're going to eat it tonight, you know, good job, and that's it. There's no honor in that whole entire thing. Like, go way back in time, the whole process that they had to go through to use every single down to the sinew of the animal. I, I, in modern times, we don't want to change that. They just found this massive structure in Siberia that was made out of mammoth bones. Um, and they found other mammoth bone structures in the past, but this was a huge one that took like lots and lots of mammoths to create this big dome. Mm -hmm. um, That's wild. Think about living near the Bering Land Bridge, you know, on a migration corridor for woolly mammoths and depending upon them for your meat to build your home to stay warm, probably to make all of your tools, to make your weapons, to fend off other predators. Yep. Like for so much of our history as a species, we've depended upon our ability to hunt in order to survive. And it is absolutely part of who we are. And if you remove that from people, as it has been removed from so many people today, um, there's a void there. And yes. For a lot of people, they know that there's something missing in their life, but they don't quite know what it is. And I think that for a lot of people, it it is hunting. Or if they can't hunt, then maybe just go outside and simulate it. Yep. But that is something that I am absolutely, my life is incomplete without. And yep. when I see kids that get to grow up with that aspect of their lives versus not, the difference is, is startling. I encourage wives because there's a, you know, I get it. It's, you know, I look at it a little different. I was raised 
no gun household, like never knew, you know, that whole thing. And again, not that I was against it. I just didn't know any different. And I know there's wives out there that they don't want to squeeze. It's not their thing and stuff like that. And I do encourage them that if it's not your thing to squeeze the trigger, which I, I get and I respect, right? Working with it and processing it, bone broth sounds so intimidating to people. And it's actually such a beautiful, it's work from start to finish, but it's like this beautiful process and it's so much work that you take so much pride in it. So as a woman, the fact that I have a whole pantry full of elk, antelope, what's a white tail, and I just, I get so excited. You're sick? Okay, oh my God, let me grab the thing. You know what I mean? I want to feed you bone broth. And it is incredibly satisfying. It is incredible. And I, I literally, women, the collagen that's in it, you buy the stupid powder at the store for God dang $36.99. When you could drink it, you can put it in a soup. You could put it as your pot roast. There, it's this universe. Your green beans for, you know, green bean casserole for Thanksgiving. Perfume replacement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I told, yeah, the whole, I always smell like a pot roast. Yeah, it was romantic. But I, you know what? If he likes pot roast, good on me. I don't we care. do. We love it. I, I, I would much rather smell like a pot roast so you could sit there and lick your chops like perfect. If it's whatever works. But <laughs> I just, I, I encourage them to just look into a little recipe that's easy. I, you know, I, we're going to do a video on it from start to finish because I could kind of mastered it. I'm super proud of my little, mm-hmm. you know, my little setup that I have. It, it took a few tries, but that's another thing is you end up carrying in a way you wouldn't normally. And then you go to the store and you flip off the bone broth on the shelf like, <laughs> like cause you never have to buy it. That's what's so amazing. And, um, you know, you, you go even further down in a rabbit hole. And after you roast the damn bones so many times and you grind them up, you put them in your damn garden. It's wild what is voided in our life because that's how we, you know, depending on how you were raised and where you went to school and all that jazz, because I could speak on behalf of experience, what is taken out of your heritage and your culture and then you get shell-shocked by going with him and thrown into it and I had to sink or swim and I decided to swim and again no regrets it it is eye-opening and the fact that he's hearing me say it's all because of him I know I'm never going to hear the end of it and it's worth it you know what he's never going to hear the end of the fox (laughs) well that's one (laughs) but there's going to be a lot of people that listen to this show and be like that Brit she is funny funny. (laughs) she is way cooler than Bam I try to tell people that I try to tell people that I am way cooler and I say that in a really modest way he's just you know cool to look at I I'm cool on the inside you know look dude no I just it, it's it's fun it's fun to be married to him and and he is literally I tell this to people everything that you see on social media he's like that in person that is exactly who he is yeah he just Tones it down for social. Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So at Super Agent Brit on Instagram. And uh, and if you want to support these uh, these wonderful people, then uh, you probably ought to support Wishes for Warriors, <laughs> which uh, we didn't even get into, I but know. we'll do that at, yeah. at another time. Yep. Yeah. My my company baby that's, that's definitely... Yeah. You know, Cakey's wishes in skin form, right? I know. It's wild. I know. So, yeah, that's another time. But this was fun. Yeah. This was fun. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You did great. Thanks, dude. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share the show with a friend. You can also rate the podcast and leave a review. Your support allows me to keep doing what I love, which is meeting incredible folks and sharing their stories with you. For more content and photos, follow the show on Instagram at Six Ranch Podcast or me at Six Ranch Outfitters. This episode was produced by Emily Brannigan with original music written and performed by Justin Hay. Art for the Six Ranch Podcast was created by John Chatelain and digitized by Celia Christofferson. Tune in every Monday for a brand new episode of the Six Ranch Podcast. I'll catch you next week.